and Chris from the Glorious Sons. It's great to see you guys. Um, you're both looking fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thanks. Appreciate that. Brett, you, you, too. you especially. Uh, I, I don't know. The last couple of years have treated, the last decade seems to have treated you very well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I think with a clean cut, I look much younger. You do. You definitely yeah. do. Um, yeah. You know, that it's, there's, there's a special place in, in my heart for the Glorious Sons for just being like the right guy in the right place at the right radio station uh, as you guys were kind of coming up in, in Kingston and, and fortunate to see a lot of those early shows um, and to see all of the things, the, the amazing things that have happened since that time is, uh, has been really just very cool to watch. So congratulations on, on the success since, uh, since leaving little, the little uh, limestone city. Thanks, man. What's been yeah, the biggest? Been all right. What's been the biggest highlight of it all? Because you guys went from like local band to um, like just exploding. Is it? Is there a single moment in there? Uh, there's been a few for sure. I mean, like when we sold out the ACC for the first time was like a huge one for me, and not just because we sold it out or anything, just because the the show was like electric and it just felt so perfect. Like every moment on stage just felt serendipitous. And um, it was one of like the real, the real honors of my life, I'd say, which was big. Opening for the Stones a couple times, playing Stones. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I that was the one that was kind of like I expected you to say uh, when I asked that yeah. question, but um, I'm glad that opening for the Stones is number two. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably Chris is number one. It's, yeah. It's it's my it's awesome to open for the Stones and it was sweet getting called back after we'd opened once so that was like a huge feeling but um, they weren't the greatest shows we've ever played them. no they no. just go by so quick and the, it's so overwhelming and it and uh, the second show especially the Canada one was we played all right but we didn't play great that one it wasn't but, it wasn't our finest hour so no is 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 that the worst one or was there because I I know every band has like. Like, oh, there was that one show where, like, that shit's never going to happen Oh, again. no, there's been far worse. Yeah? Atlanta. Remember Atlanta? I, lo- I forgot the words, like, four songs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember specific scenes. I felt I like the sure. guy from uh, uh, Boom Goes the Dynamite on stage. <laughs> <laughs> just just make sounds that sound like the words, because that's what most that's people what do, did. right? Like That's what I did. <laughs> Well, it's good to know that someone who commands a president on stage like that, that that can happen uh, even to the best of them at times. I think it happens a lot. Like, I need to rest my forearm. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, like, you learn from those moments. Like, it happened all the time when we were coming up. Like, you know, I think that, I don't know, obviously you're supposed to disappear into the music. And, you know, when you're really at your best, you... Uh, you're just experiencing a moment, but like a certain amount of professionalism, professionalism and learning professionalism on stage is like fucking up and then getting better. It's sure. kind of no different than probably comedy would be, but you know, a little different cause you're not playing to a silent room. Yeah. It, one of those things that you just said uh, made me think of something is when you guys came into uh, the radio station, uh, you know, in the early days, you know, in the, I think probably just before, just before this one came out, which yeah, I'm still not going to sell on eBay, which is probably worth some money now. The debut EP signed by the band. That's funny. I'm not going to do it. I swear I'm not going to do it. I um, don't know how much money would be worth, like 20 bucks. <laughs> a, little, a little more than it costed back then, maybe. But when you guys came into the radio station, there was uh, an interlude in one of the songs where you went into the L.A. woman by the doors yeah. breakdown. And to yeah. me, when I saw that and you had, you like closed your eyes and you were, you were somewhere else. I'm like, um, I think this band is going somewhere. Like it was, it was, you just had that feeling about you guys. Did you have that feeling? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you don't, I mean, we had a certain brashness and cockiness in, in feeling like we were going to, you know, do great things. I think like every band worth its salt does when they're coming up. Like we were so cocky that we didn't even bother to reel the whole learn to re- 
learn the whole song of LA Woman or the real chords. We just did whatever we wanted. <laughs> and I mean, it's, looking back on it, like some of that stuff is a little cringeworthy now, but you're like, I don't know, you're 22 and you got a voice and you know that it kind of sounds like it. And you know, people are going to enjoy it. So Yeah. I think that's what makes things unique sometimes. For sure. Chris, you also, uh, came in uh, we had I, I got to meet you in those days too and yeah. um I, I have some of your your content as well which is oh, a song wow. I, I truly dig to be honest oh cool yes yeah. which one is that oh i'm so, showing you the b-side yeah it was it everybody's got something to hide and that's it that is yeah. which is a great yeah. song uh, by the way and i i did something earlier this afternoon because it just kind of struck me as i was listening to it that you know, maybe some of some of your sound around the time that you joined the band, you know, had a bit of a, an impact and an effect on the sound of the song. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play you something and see what you guys think of this. Okay. I hope you can hear it, or else. <laughs> All right, here, check this out. Just lay low on the streets tonight. If you wanna save your life, the night comes to watch the day burn down. <laughs> huh? <laughs> it's it's seamless. It sounds beautiful. The production on the Glorious Suns is like so much crisper. But <laughs> yeah. I did notice that. Am I on to anything? Uh, I, I think that the I actually when we were doing Kingdom in My Heart, I actually mentioned that up about that song because it had a very similar thing. It, I mean, uh, I would say yeah. There's like you can't help but like i'm a i'm a pretty boisterous presence <laughs> yeah i'm gonna bully my way into it i love that you've got you've got some of the best fashion in canadian rock and roll by the way i'll say oh, that thank yeah. you sir i i think for sure that it wouldn't even be like a single song like that where he'd come in and change no. dynamics but like i mean everything down to his fingers like it just changes the tone of an album and obviously chris is you know characterize the style over the years that you can't really hide so when you have somebody join your band after after somebody quitting i mean you know that he's going to bring some you, you don't bring him in unless he's going to change things right you know i mean I was, when i saw that that you had joined the band i was super stoked about that i thought that was really cool and uh, for those who might not have caught it your your previous band was called beginner's guide to endings um yeah how many of these were pressed you know you must uh i don't know i think maybe like a thousand or something maybe i yeah. don't know because that it, was my buddy that was my buddy tommy street from a band called the spades he had he has a, a label and they were doing those seven inch series and they asked me to do it so that was all he's doing that's really cool what was the name of because this isn't the one that that got a bit of airplay what was the name of the tune that got some airplay do you remember that one? Oh, that was called uh enemies enemies that's it that's right yeah. um there's one more thing actually but on kingdom in my heart that i wanted to play that I, I don't know if anybody has ever mentioned this, but ever since I heard the song, maybe it's because I grew up in Scarborough. I think it's probably because I came from Scarborough that this comes to mind. Oh, baby, I like it, bro. Yeah, baby, I like it, bro. Yeah, baby, I like it, no, no, no. no. We, we knew that was a hip hop trick yeah, for wanted, sure we wanted, when we, we put it in. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's good to know because it, it just, I mean, it suits the song perfectly, but in my mind, I'm like, geez, that sounds like the, the one kind of piano note from Old Dirty Bastard. That, that's, that's not the only. Yeah, yeah I think it's in about 50. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hip hop trick, big time. The, the Johnny One note. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's cool. Um, there was another one that I, I remember from the early days too is. Uh, that show at the ale house. There's a show at the ale house where you would you would crank your your hand off a, of something. Uh, Jay's guitar head, yeah. And it, it I don't. Are there any photos of that? Because uh, I I was sitting like I was standing like side stage there, and it, it instantly swelled up to like half the size of a baseball. Well, yeah, like no, that. we didn't get any photos. I should have though. I would have loved to actually kind of posted that on our socials or something because it it was pretty raunchy it was actually disgusting it, it got huge did that take a while to like how many days did that take to to like two weeks yeah it swelled up it's like it kept swelling after the show 
and I definitely thought it was broken, but then I don't think that I ended up breaking anything because like we, we, we had to go on the road and we ended up playing and it, the swelling slowly went down and it healed itself. But yeah, it was, it was, it was a long time kind of like just tender at least, but it was really funny. I was like proud of it and I was telling you, I couldn't even feel it. That's like, when you got hooked to Percocets, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I couldn't feel a thing. <laughs> Between that and the vodka, I, everything was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> In the ambient. And <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a game seven attitude, though. I like that. Like you were going out on the road. Did you go get an x ray or just like don't have no. time? We're just going. No, we didn't have time. We, we had a party after that and then we had to go. We left that morning to go on the road. So it was like. I wasn't going to miss the party and I definitely wasn't going to miss bus call. So of course you were Brett. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> I would like to go to KGH instead of like go to the, like Burnett street and get hammered with everybody would, would have been like the end of the world to me back then. Yeah. There, there's something about Kingston for, for anybody who's spent a bit of time there or has, has lived there. Like I lived there for a couple of years, but also kind of was around, uh, you know, a little bit before that too. Um, there's there's something about that town, you know. There definitely is. Oh, it's 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 yeah. I put it up against like many many cities that we've been to. I mean, it's smaller for sure. Colorful characters here, though. Oh yeah, the, the talent and, and the people, like the music, the music that's coming to Kingston. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, pound for pound for sure. And uh, there there seems to be a lot of people interested in music in Kingston that are actually worth their, you know, weight a little more than in other cities. Not, I'm not talking about like, if you go to Toronto, I mean, you're going to get into like probably like 25 to 50,000 bands. <laughs> oh <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. It's over. It can in, be overwhelming. Yeah. But in Kingston though, yeah, th there's a lot of people who are like, actually good musicians and interested in cultivating a bit of a scene but then again there's a lot of people who are like you know half musicians and you know they try to pick, they that, try to ride the coattails of the scene oh well, no they just don't leave i mean like they never <laughs> oh right yeah hometown yeah. heroes yeah um but can, that's cool too it, it can also be a, a city where like like you don't see a lot of people maybe this has changed a bit now but when I was coming up, I didn't see a lot of people like really, truly going for it. Like really, they're, they're not going for the NHL. They're happy to like play on the pond. And I think a lot of that is that maybe people get afraid of failure or something and they're afraid they're going to look stupid if they actually try something and fail at it. Whereas that was never an issue with me or with these guys. It was just like we were going for well, it at uh, all times. Another yeah. thing to that point that's kind of a little contradictory is like when we were coming up i didn't even know what going for it meant but i was just gonna go for it anyway yeah whereas like i think a lot of people feel that way but it's small enough of a community that you can kind of make a name for yourself and then kind yeah. of support yourself with the bread like in the small community but like just as i wouldn't have known like you wouldn't you wouldn't even know how to book a tour because like that those like little ins and outs of like the music for sure. Music yeah. game are like so important to like taking like I don't know not the next step but to like getting your name out there more. It's really 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 hard to get somebody to hear about you in Vancouver if you've never stepped foot of, out of Kingston. You guys like, have a great team with a black box, um, just good dudes and uh, yeah. So you've got you've got a great support in that area, obviously. Now. Yeah, yeah. And we toured. We did tour our asses off, like. Yeah, like when we started touring, like a big night for us was sixty people. Like that was awesome out in um, Kelowna or any of those places on the west coast. So yeah. it's really like it's it's a really slow game, and I mean, people would say that it's a meteoric rise, as you were describing, or fast for for the band. But in the end, like as the the hours are ticking by on the bus and then the years are going by it's like you never really truly see daylight you just kind of 
well, and Chasing that, the Cherry. That song, Mama, was like the little engine that could, too. Like, even be, long before I was in the band, I remember watching that song just, like, take off all over Canada. And it was, like, it was an, it was an independent release. You guys didn't even, like, have a radio team or anything, I don't think. We had one girl, yeah, from okay, the yeah. East Coast. And so that, that tune just had legs and then... A, a good it. song that that was a great summer tune and it, it was released at the right time and it just clicked with people um yeah. yeah that that that's a great foray into the band i mean i'm sure there's a ton of people who discovered the band well after that though um, yeah and may go back and find some of those those things once they start to oh i like this band i'm gonna i'm gonna dig a little bit deeper here we um, should take it back to radio this summer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not, right? There's so many bands. That, well, there's some bands that get signed off their independent material. And then once they're signed, it's like, okay, we got to make this stuff disappear because this is your debut. This is. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. That They didn't do that to us. They signed us off of like independence. Well, and then, well, they signed you off what was already happening. <laughs> yeah. But then we. We just kept releasing off Shapeless, right? Yeah, and I mean, all the songs on Shapeless are are I, when I was, um, you know, putting the, like programming at K Rock. To me, White Noise at the time was the tune that I was. It was just it fit with everything, um, you know. It fit at every part of the day on the station. Um, to me, that was the one that really kind of um, got me hooked on on the band. Um, you yeah. know, Mama was a, a feeling, a vibe, and everything. But to me, White Noise was like, okay, this is rock and roll. This is what we're doing now. Um, yeah. So I always dug that tune. But I, but the whole, uh, the whole EP, yeah, is is pretty solid. It, and one day, you might not think so right now, Brett, because it, maybe there's a bit of humility there, and that's fine. But one day, this is going to be <laughs> worth big money. <laughs> And uh, hopefully, hopefully millions. And if it's worth millions, then I will sell it. I'm sorry. I will. make sure make sure you cut me in. OK, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I, I had the beaches on and I I, yeah. I did ask um, your your female counterpart a few questions because I listened to their new EP, which is great. I really dig it. And I'm like, OK, there's one song on here about Brett, but I hope there's not two. And I don't know if you caught any of that podcast or, or heard no. about this at all. No, I think she mentioned it, though. Was it slow-mo that you said? Yeah. Yeah, that's what she... That's what she... I didn't know. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> that's what she... Did yeah. you say that's what she said? <laughs> to be honest, uh, to prove how much of an idiot I am, she, she, when she showed me that song, I didn't know it was about me. <laughs> It's probably not good practice to just assume those things either. Like, yeah, this is about me. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, me. yeah, Carly Simon wrote a song about that. I, I, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, have you written any songs about her? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Plenty. Plenty of those yeah, songs? I, and just to get, like, out of the question, like, if it's asked to just go, all my songs are kind of about you. But it's just kind of a throwaway line. But I, she probably does show up in, in all sorts of little lines. Oh, yeah. Lines of, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think like that's kind of like part of loving somebody is that they tend to have like a you know drastic influence on your life, and then that influence in your life gets put into every piece of your work. If 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 when you're working, you know, it was like Dewey Cox when on the road when we were just watching them fall in love. We were doing Come Down every night, <laughs> and she was singing. They made it a duet, and it was just like it was literally like doing. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, and and the rest of the band is in the closet, like, like Brett, you don't want no part of this, man. <laughs> <laughs> I actually love that movie. I'm glad you brought up Dewey Cox Me because too. beautiful movie. Yeah, I think that's like any given any Sunday that's spent on the couch uh, is oh, yeah. is enhanced yeah. by Walk Hard. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, it's a great Cox movie. Story. So, so what's it been like, um, you know, what's the band been up to during pandemic? Do you guys get any, any hobbies that wouldn't have happened otherwise? I've been mm. going to anti-mask rallies. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> uh, What did we get up to? I'll be sure to Please? use that as a clip. I'll, I'll use that yeah, as a clip. Yeah. It'll get some traction. <laughs> Please do. Yeah, Please no problem. I got you. <laughs> that narrative. Um, we, we've been writing and recording a shit ton. And, yeah. Uh, that wasn't a new hobby exactly, but it definitely gave us a lot of time to 
kind of do things uh, by ourselves too. Yeah. Like yeah. we had didn't work with a producer this time out. Basically, me and Brett did it, and that's cool. And, and Jay as well. And and uh, I mean, it's all this band has always been a best idea wins scenario, no matter where it comes from. So, but just being able to kind of like, I always wanted this band to get recordings that sound a little more like we sound live. Um, mm-hmm. And some of our past stuff has just been uh, not that always. And so we're, we're capturing, I don't know if you've heard Daylight, Young King and stuff, but we're, yeah. I think we're capturing like a little closer to that, that uh, how, recklessness. how our band actually sounds plugged yeah. in, you know? That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Cause um, it, the, the union is a very kind of, that's what you're kind of describing yeah. is that right. The, yeah. Un- yeah. the title track of that album is honestly like another one of those songs that is just, that I absolutely love. Um, I, I thought that could have been a great single, um, especially as the yeah, title, but. I still love playing that song. Yeah, the whole line, uh, now your daddy doesn't like me because I'm a dirty rock and roller. Just, <laughs> yeah. that, is the, yeah. that, that, that part of the song needs to be a little bit longer. I don't know if you could extend that. <laughs> I do live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That gets everybody. They're just like, yeah, that's me. I'm a, I'm a fucking dirt bag too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so when's more stuff gonna, you guys have this big collection of music. What's, uh, or when are we going to hear it? Like soon. Soon? Cause you're touring yeah. again now, right? The, the tour is announced. Yeah. We've, we're, you're going to hear it like relatively soon, like two more, like as soon as possible. And then, um, I don't think we're like ready to pull out, uh, put out a full album yet because, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm liking the way we're kind of sprinkling the songs out because some of them might not necessarily live with each other on an album, but it's very, it's very much of, the modern way too. Is just like, yeah, here's our new single, you know. And in, in, in being like an independent band stuff right now, it's kind of more about like I really wanted us to have the freedom to you know be able to be prolific and, and spontaneous and too. spontaneous yeah. and. I mean, for better or for worse, I mean, the whole rally cry with me has been like, I don't really care about like chasing the carrot now. I want, I want the band after forty years to have like five hundred songs to people for people to to listen to. Like, I I want to be that prolific band of songwriters that I believe we are, and I think that's what makes us stand out. To be honest. The, the- the writing is definitely, and it's it's never easy. Like to the idea of trying to pen five hundred songs to someone like me is like okay, well that's impossible. But because um, I I find like it, writing songs aren't easy. Like how many songs, and, and even big popular songs start with like I was walking down the street someday. You know, like so many songs start with that. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> Chicago, one of the biggest songs of like uh, of the the sixties starts. You know. Um, so I think to be prolific is a very difficult thing to do. Yeah. For you some. Try to, you just gotta you just gotta try to make your life interesting and grow because that's gonna give you more things to, to write about. And it's like you know, as long as you're growing as a person, there will always be things to say, I think, in a different unique way. Yeah, I don't think that being prolific's that hard if you're like a songwriter who loves your craft. I I like if you're trying to like chase a carrot and you're trying to be, you know, figure out what the greatest song is for the times right now or how to get on. Yeah. The what's the over. algorithm to calculate yeah, the then, uh, then uh, that's radio really hit hard. or whatever. Yeah. That's well, the wrong you're, approach. You're lost already. At that that's point. really hard, but your brain's just filled with smoke anyways. Yeah. So, but yeah. like, I don't think being prolific is that hard. Mm-hmm. I think that, you know, um, you know, getting the music out and keeping people interested is the next, you know, part of that um, scenario. But I think, I think that people just want to hear bands release music and go to or live. I also think too, that like, that's where the, the kind of uh, uh, state of it is for the listener too, is, is like, you know, you work, you work all year on a record or something, you get 10 or 12 songs and you put them all out in one bundle and, you know the vast majority of people here two or three tops yeah yes and then they're on to the next ten thousand projects that got released that right. day. so the way of like dabbling these out two at a time i think it holds people it, it keeps you like 
it keeps the band like fresh for people and like the, you're, you're kind of just you know you're always showing up every month or whatever it's a double-edged sword i find because i love the idea and concept of a well-sequenced record yeah. but but that's just the point sense. is you have you have to continue working toward that well-sequenced record too like you if you write enough songs you're gonna have some that you can put out like this and then you're gonna have some that might fit on you know your masterpiece so to speak yeah um but the way that people release now it can be very much like let's build around you know a single and the video and maybe do that you know every couple months or something as opposed to here's the album and the radio single and then there's eight songs that nobody really kind of yeah that don't get yeah. the attention that they might deserve i think yeah um, yeah so before the pandemic, I think you guys were one of the the first shows that, that got canceled here. You were going to come to Ottawa, um, but it was a different tour. I think you guys were to, were going to be touring with Black Pistol Fire. Yeah. At that time, um, did any? How many of those shows happened before it got cut off? Yeah, like four or five. Four or five, I think. That's because yeah. there's a great pairing. Those two bands. I mean, I loved Black Pistol Fire's first record. Um, I was I was super stoked about that show. And now that they're you're coming, now that you're coming, they were lighting like a fire under our ass. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, are there there are Canadians that live down in like in Texas now? Is that true? Is that what yeah. they're doing? Yeah. Yeah, they live in Austin. Yeah, um, which kind of fits with their. They, they've got that. They've got that a, a bit of twang and, and a bit of yeah yeah to their sound, which is cool. But now that you guys are coming around, also another um, artist that is uh, on the, the same team as you guys, which is going to be a massive show, JJ Wild. Yeah. So uh, these shows are, are going to be bananas. You must be excited to, to get back out and play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's extremely excited to get back out. Scared as well. And uh, just really happy that the tour is selling and, you know, because... I don't know what everybody else thinks, but for myself, when you're sitting at home for two years, your brain can start playing tricks on you quite easily. There's and, um, a lot of nights where I've I've finished like doing what I would do during the day, and then it's like, well, now what? You know, it's like <laughs> I guess I guess I'll just keep working because it's something to do. You know um, what you should do? Smoke more weed. Eat you know? mushrooms. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right. If you that say is so, true, though, that helped me a little bit. Oh, really? Did you? Were you like microdosing, or? Well, I was definitely microdosing compared to Chris, but um, <laughs> I, I was macrodosing. You're macrodosing? Yeah, I, I had that problem, but it would like uh, kind of like start like in the morning when I woke up. Like, what is there even to do? That like, what am I going to do? That's even going to fulfill me? Like, what's the point of doing anything for like a basically three, four week period? And I think one of the things that helped was I started uh, doing some mushrooms, you know, at night and just listening to records. And I never felt bad about sitting down because, you know, the problem when your whole week's comp uh, filled with like nothing. I mean, all you have, it's like an em embarrassment of riches. All you have is endless opportunities to do whatever you want, but you can't really do anything. And... <laughs> Even like the work, it's like, well, why would I, why would I do a bunch of work to my house if I don't know if I'm going to work <laughs> any year? Right. Yeah. No, it's, uh, I think there's a lot of people that have, that have felt that. And I think that we're just like at the tip of the iceberg of, of getting past some of this. And there's, there's a lot of excitement that, that builds around oh, yeah. like the, the freedom that, that people haven't really had. Um, you know, what happened to me, uh, the, Three days ago, I went to get Indian food, like takeout, and I forgot that downtown had reopened. <laughs> so I'm like used to like just like zooming down uh, Ontario Street and just parking my car like easy and like running in. And I like basically coming downtown, like seeing like <laughs> thousands of people walking about, like just this wave of anxiety yeah. just floated across my What is body. happening, like, right? Yeah. Like, how the fuck am I going to park? Like, what if I see somebody I don't know? I don't want to talk to anybody right now. Like, oh, it was really, really weird to see people on the streets again. I would like to have a more uplifting message, but it was scary. Yeah, like, no, seeing it's, humans. I think there's also maybe a bit of uh, concern or anxiety around, like, 
we're going to go back into public because maybe pe- there's a lot of people who have gotten used to this like isolation and socializing is going to feel weird. The, the, the re- repercussions yeah. of this thing is going to be decades. Yeah. It's going to be, it's yeah. going to be hard on people. Yeah. 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 Have you, you guys know, so- written about that at all? Does that come in or do you try to escape it? I try not to, I, I've, I've done a few little things about, you know, the times or whatever. And most wrote, of the time I end up throwing up. I wrote a song. Well, you did Spaceman's Space Man's kind of about that. Oh yeah. But, but like, it's also about like the building of it and being torn down around me. So, but, uh, yeah, there's there's good fodder there for sure. I I think that the first year of it, I mean, obviously it was incredibly unfortunate the virus and everything, but like the first year of it was like a really nice reset for yeah. for myself anyway. And obviously I'm very uh blessed and lucky to be able to make that statement and that's not lost on me. But um I think a lot of people felt that that there was like we we needed something to pump the brakes a bit. You know? Yeah, I I can relate to that because my, you know, life is very different uh, now compared to what it was, you know, pre-pandemic. And, you know, I think a lot of that, there's a lot in there that is for, for the best. Um, and it would never have happened unless we got thrown into this situation. So you try to find the yeah. positives where you can. There was, there was no way this band was going to be taking a break unless something like Act of God. <laughs> we talked about it for the last year all the time like we gotta actually take some real time one day <laughs> and it was like yeah yeah and oh we got this tour and we're gone for four months and and like you know for the last five years that i've been in the band we have just we have not stopped touring and uh so you know it was kind of the our hand was forced like everybody's was and uh you just yeah you have to take the positivity out of it and just get the rest and yeah and now we're ready to fucking get back out there because we're recharged but i've heard musicians it's, it's, say uh there's nothing better than coming home from the road and then there's nothing better than going out on the road it's also like the transitions are sort of the hardest part for me yeah. like what once i'm out there i don't want to come back and the thought of like what do i even do in kingston like what is my life there Whereas when I'm home for too long, it's, you start getting like, oh, fuck, I'm getting on a bus again. For my, you know. Yeah, that's like <laughs> funny. It's I'd say it's like opposite of that. There's nothing worse than going on the road, and there's nothing worse yeah. than coming home. That's yeah. interesting. That's interesting. It, it's maybe like a pessimistic way to look at it's it. It's just actually, a transition. It's, it's yeah, weird. the transitions you just are need hard. Like a few days or a week to like climatize to because they're very different lives like they're very different lives you know i maybe even feel a bit of that around changing of the seasons you know like when it's about to be summer but everything's like covered in crap that's melted and you know like you know the good things are ahead but it's not happening yet so it's like now is kind of a you know yeah and the worst part is if you get like only that crap part and you gotta go back out so it's like you might only have two weeks so you never really get that like yeah that cement footing back yeah you know yeah but and that's not always just happens that way sometimes i mean if, if a coronavirus takes over the world then you definitely do <laughs> you have no choice you just you have no <laughs> choice um thanks so much guys i can't wait to uh to see you in town here in february uh td place in ottawa uh with jj wild that show is gonna be what people have been waiting for uh for sure oh, yeah. yeah so yeah. Thanks so much for taking the time. It was great to see you. And uh, uh, Thanks, I guess, look forward to seeing you here. Great to see you, man. Yeah. All the best, Daryl. Yeah.